Hurricanes are known to be an East Coast thing. The West Coast, specifically California, is known to deal with their fair share of earthquakes, floods, and wildfires, among other natural occurrences. Hurricanes really aren't one of them, but that doesn't mean it's impossible for California to get one. Today's video will actually be focusing on Los Angeles and how the City of Angels would deal with a storm like no other. Today on Life's Biggest Questions, we're asking what if a Category 5 hurricane hit Los Angeles? Welcome back to LBQ, guys. I'm your host for this one, Jared Bronstein, and today we're talking about hurricanes. Let us know in the comments down below what questions you'd like answered on our channel, and be sure to stick around till the end of this one for some comment replies from a previous video. For now, let's get right into it. So for those of you unaware about categories regarding hurricanes, they're categorized to determine how severe the hurricane potentially could be and what its characteristics are. According to the Saphir Simpson Hurricane Wind Scale, a Category 1 hurricane is a hurricane with sustained winds of 74 to 95 miles per hour and could cause some damage due to dangerous winds. In 1858, a Category 1 storm hit San Diego, and even though it was the tail end of the storm, it still destroyed homes, crops, and flooded parts of Los Angeles as well. In 2004, it was estimated that the damage would be equivalent to around $500 million had the storm happened now. According to the hurricane scale, the categories increase as the winds and danger intensifies, with the categories going up 20 miles per hour, meaning a category 2 would be winds of 96 to 110 miles per hour and so on. According to the National Hurricane Center and Central Pacific Hurricane Center, a major category 5 hurricane would reach 157 miles per hour or higher, and I quote, catastrophic damage will occur. A high percentage of framed homes will be destroyed with total roof failure and wall collapse. Fallen trees and power poles will isolate residential areas. Power outages will last for weeks to possibly months. Most of the area will be uninhabitable for weeks or months. Now, I think it's safe to say regardless of where a Category 5 hurricane hits, destruction is sure to follow. With winds that powerful, you're guaranteed buildings crumble, flooding consumes most of the land, and the place you once called home would certainly no longer be around. With that being said, Los Angeles may be able to handle a Category 5 hurricane better than, say, a city like New York. Now, that doesn't mean things would be easy for the people of LA. In fact, it would still turn the city upside down to the point that it would barely be recognizable. However, unlike New York City, who had issues with their rising tides, it doesn't seem like Los Angeles would be as concerned with sea levels causing the city to flood. That doesn't mean storm surge wouldn't affect them. Having 20-foot storm tides would definitely cause damage anywhere. And considering how California as a state is known to have their fair share of earthquakes, a lot of the buildings are structurally built to stay up. Still, that's not to say buildings wouldn't come down. As you know, Category 5 hurricanes are like no other. It really doesn't matter where you live or how prepared you are, the natural disaster that is a Cat 5 hurricane is certain to tear whatever is in its path apart. So how would LA handle all of this? Well, first things first, panic. Unlike 1858, technology has changed, so we can predict when things like this are going to happen. And although it is almost impossible, I mean, statistically speaking, it is impossible, this year has been a crazy one, so who knows at this point. Still, the city of LA would be able to let the people know the storm is coming, giving them the appropriate time to evacuate. Now, as is the case with any storm or natural disaster, you have the stubborn people who refuse to leave. The city would declare a state of emergency knowing the hurricane was well on its way, and depending on how much time before it was expected to make landfall, would determine how much hysteria takes over. Usually, researchers can predict a hurricane's path three to five days prior, but that doesn't mean they couldn't predict that the hurricane would make its way to LA before then. And even with a week's notice, the people of LA would still go into frenzy mode. Some would start stocking up on household items, much like how people behaved during the pandemic. Others would be booking the first flight out, and the majority of the rest would pack all of their belongings in their car and hit the road. Considering how hurricanes never hit the West Coast, the people wouldn't know what to do to prepare, so they would inevitably just start freaking out. Much like how people start driving in Toronto when it starts to snow, even though that happens every year. Then again, snowfall and hurricanes are two completely different things, so I get it. As previously mentioned, you'd have the few stubborn people who would refuse to leave, either opting to possibly go into their own shelter for protection, or just wanting to fend for themselves. Now, considering how LA County has a population of about 11 million people, you can imagine how tough it would be to get out with everyone else trying to do the same. And considering how LA is known to have some of the worst traffic in the world, well, you can only imagine what it'd be like with everyone trying to leave at the same time. But what about those who had nowhere to go? Los Angeles is also known for having a very large homeless population and the city would certainly need to find a way to take care of their own. Much like the example I made in the New York City video, it's likely Los Angeles or even the state of California provides buses or transportation as well as shelter for those who literally don't have anywhere else to go. Inevitably though, the storm would hit, and as you can imagine, it would be incredibly destructive. Even though LA and California in general build their structures for the impact earthquakes have, I still don't think they would necessarily be able to stand winds exceeding 157 miles per hour. 
and the ones that do somehow find a way to stay up would still be destroyed when all is said and done. The amount of debris that would be flying around from billboards to cars, pieces of homes, and of course, whatever else is to be uprooted and tossed across LA would make the city unrecognizable. But it seems we still haven't even touched on what would likely be the most detrimental part of a hurricane hitting LA at least in regards to the city itself, not the people. As we know, there would certainly be a death toll, although I can't even estimate what that number may be. It would all depend on how many people actually evacuate and where they go. Obviously, for a hurricane as strong as this one to hit LA, well, it goes without saying that surrounding areas would certainly be affected too. It all depends on the path of the hurricane and how long it was to last but the majority of California would feel the effects to some extent. But it seems the biggest impact the hurricane would have on LA would be the flooding. We know that heavy rainfall in the past has led to flooding in LA, so imagine how much damage a Category 5 hurricane would do. The city may never be able to fully recover, as specific areas could potentially never rise above the water it drowned in. This in itself could be an issue for those trying to leave the city, because the downpour of a hurricane can certainly start affecting a city before the eye actually hits. The fact that regular rainfall can cause flooding on freeways should be enough proof that a torrential downpour would lead to much more serious problems. In September of 2015, Tropical Storm Linda caused severe flooding and major power outages across most of Southern California. LA specifically got about 2.39 inches of rain, but it seems we can determine what would happen best when looking at the 1939 California Tropical Storm. Although it was a hurricane that later deteriorated into a tropical storm, the amount of rain that hit California was catastrophic. LA got 5.66 inches of rain in 24 hours, and with the damage it caused, according to an article from the Times, I quote, when it was all over, damage to boats, structures, power, and phone lines was extensive, exceeding $1.5 million. Crop damage amounted to $500,000. Half of the San Clement Pier in Southern Orange County was washed away. $1 million in 1939 is equivalent to nearly $18 million in 2019. Now, as previously mentioned back in 1939, things weren't the way they are now. We weren't as prepared for any kind of natural disaster, nor do we have the technology to determine when and where the hurricane would hit hardest. Thankfully, because of all of this, LA would be able to not only warn the citizens, but would also hopefully be able to find ways to reduce the amount of damage caused. They'd also be able to prepare for the aftermath, which, to be honest, I really couldn't say for sure what the number would be. But if I had to guess, I'd say somewhere around, if not even more, than what Hurricane Harvey and Katrina cost. And that was approximately $125 billion US. Now here's the good news. As I mentioned before, the odds of this happening are pretty much statistically impossible. And the sad reality is, if a hurricane that serious were to hit the West Coast, well, it would definitely do irreversible damage to the entire state of California, not just LA. And although I didn't touch on the other surrounding areas that would be affected, this video was more so focused on what would happen to LA. Still, the entire state would be in shambles, between the flooding, mudslides, falling rocks, it really just would not be a good situation. And it seems not only would LA go into a state of emergency, but all of California would have to. Final death toll numbers, unfortunately, would likely exceed the thousands, and it would take weeks, if not months, before Los Angeles started to feel like it did prior to the storm. Who knows if they would ever fully recover? But don't worry guys, it won't happen. Earthquakes on the other hand, well let's just say they're well prepared for those, so I'd wish them luck, but I doubt they need any. And that does it for this one guys, let me know your thoughts on this video in the comments down below. How do you guys think LA would handle a Category 5 storm? Let us know down below, and as always, I encourage you guys to drop us some comments down below with questions you want to see on our channel. For now, let's reply to some comments from the video, what if a Category 5 hurricane hits New York? Just felt it was fitting considering, you know, we're doing it in LA, so. Sahir Odeh said, don't put ideas in 2020's head, okay? Like I said, man, it's it's like, it's impossible, but at this point, who knows? I really, uh, who knows? Andre said, Floridians watching this like, pathetic. You know what? Just because Florida is so used to hurricanes, it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, they're prepared for it. I mean, every year, hurricanes hit Florida, yet there's still so much destruction. Unfortunately, people die, which, you know, I don't understand why they stay there. And Whatever. I'm not going to get into it, guys. Hopefully, hurricane season isn't that bad, and I really hope people don't have to lose their lives, but unfortunately, it seems like it happens every year. Anime Rink said, 319, quoting me, during the pandemic of 2020, he says that as if it already happened, we in the middle of it, lol. Yeah, I, I kind of said it because I was thinking long term, like if someone watches the video next year, hopefully, uh, it, it would make more sense for me to be like, during the pandemic of 2020, rather than being like, right now. With that being said, yeah, I should say right now, which I think in this video I did say right now, or maybe I said pandemic of 2020 again. I'm not really sure. I more so did it just to, you know, for the future. People watching it down the road aren't like, there's no pandemic right now. That's why I said it. Anyways, guys, that's it for this one. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein. If you guys are enjoying these videos about Category 5 hurricanes hitting random cities, let us know in the comments down below another city you'd want to see it hit. Uh, I live in Toronto, so I think it'd be cool. What if a Category 5 hurricane hit Toronto? Obviously, don't want that to happen, but 
be a cool hypothetical video, maybe. Anyways, I've been your host, Jared Bronson. You guys have been watching LBQ. We'll see you in the next one.